Hi guys, Harry here, welcome to Scrap Science. So today I thought I'd show you a quick and easy method of generating sulfuric acid, seeing as it's kind of difficult to get hold of. Alright, so to get this done we're going to be electrolyzing a copper sulfate solution. The copper sulfate will provide sulfate ions and we'll be replacing the copper ions with hydrogen ions to create sulfuric acid. So obviously the first thing we're going to need to do is create a copper sulfate solution with distilled water. Rainwater should do pretty well for this. See here I've got around 200 milliliters. Alright, there we are. So to make our copper sulfate solution we'll add our 200 milliliters of rainwater to the vessel we'll be doing the electrolysis in and then add around, let's say, 15 grams of copper sulphate. That should be around 15 grams. And we'll stir it to get it all dissolved. Alright, all done. Next thing you're going to need is your electrodes. Now for the cathode, where you'll be uh, reducing the copper ions into copper metal, obviously the best choice is going to be copper, seeing as it's copper metal already and it's inert to sulfuric acid that we'll be generating. Let's put that in. That will do. Alright, now the material for your anode is a little bit harder to choose, seeing as uh, it needs to be inert to sulfuric acid and be under oxidation the entire time that you're electrolyzing the solution. Uh, if you've got nothing else, then these graphite carbon rods work pretty well, though they will fill the solution with kind of black soot that you'll need to filter out later. What work better are these lead dioxide anodes. Uh, the good thing about these is that they're already oxidized, so they can't oxidize further, and they're inert to sulfuric acid. So they'll work perfectly. You can see I've already made one out of a small lead strip. Let's stick that in. Now if you can't get a hold of lead or something like platinum, then just use one of these carbon rods. They work pretty well, but you will need to filter the solution. So to understand what's going to happen, let's have a look at the solution we'll be electrolyzing. We're going to have water molecules, sulfate ions, copper ions, we have our copper cathode and our lead dioxide anode. Now first to understand the electrolysis, we're going to have to have a look at what happens at the anode. Uh, there are two things that are going on here. There's going to be water contacting the anode, and the SO4 2- ions are going to be attracted to the positive charge. Now at the anode, oxidation wants to occur, so it's going to want to take electrons from things. It can either do that with the sulfate ion, or from the water itself. Let's write out the equations for both. Alright, so from the equations you can see that we could oxidize water, giving four hydrogen ions, oxygen gas, and four electrons that will travel around the circuit, or we could oxidize the sulfate ion to peroxidisulfate, and two electrons which will go around the circuit. Now, the voltage of the oxidation of water is 1.23 volts, and the voltage of the oxidation of the sulfate ion is 2.01 volts. At the anode, because we're oxidizing, it's going to choose the lowest voltage so we're going to be oxidizing the water much more than we're going to be oxidizing this. So let's write that out. Those two water molecules become O2 gas, which will bubble up, and we'll get four H plus ions. All right, now let's have a look at what happens at the cathode. This is the negative electrode, so this is where reduction is going to be occurring. There's three things that are going to happen here. There's going to be water in contact with the electrode. We don't actually need to worry about this because water doesn't like to reduce, it likes to oxidize, as we saw over here. Uh, the copper ions are going to be attracted and the hydrogen ions are going to be attracted because of the opposite charges. So the copper electrode, negative electrode, has a choice between reducing the copper ions or the hydrogen ions. Let's write out the equations for those.
Alright, so from these equations you can see that we'll either be reducing copper 2 plus into copper metal or hydrogen plus into hydrogen gas. The voltages for these equations are 0 0.337 volts for the reduction of copper 2 plus and 0 volts by definition of the reduction of hydrogen ions. Now, on the negative electrode or the cathode, uh, it actually favours the highest voltage as opposed to the lowest voltage on the anode. So we're easily going to be reducing copper 2 plus ions rather than hydrogen ions. So let's draw that out. We're getting rid of these. They'll come down and come out as copper metal on the cathode, making the electrode grow. Now what we're going to have left is water, hydrogen ions, and sulfate ions. Essentially a sulfuric acid solution. The next thing we're going to want to work out is the concentration of sulfuric acid that we're going to have at the end based on how much copper sulfate and water we had at the beginning. You can see here I've got the equation written out, copper sulfate plus water is going to give us sulfuric acid, copper and oxygen gas. So the things that we do know are that we add 15 grams of copper sulfate, that was copper sulfate pentahydrate that we added because it was blue crystals not white and that we're going to have 200 milliliters of solution at the end. So the first thing we're going to need to work out is the number of moles of copper sulfate that we had in the beginning, which is going to be the same as the number of moles of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Now the molar mass of copper sulfate pentahydrate is 249.7 grams per mole. So therefore, if we do 15 grams divided by 249.7 grams, that's going to give us the number of moles that we had. I'll do that on the calculator. Alright, so we're going to have 0 0.06 moles of copper sulfate. Now, due to the ratio of copper sulfate to sulfuric acid being 1 to 1, we're also going to have 0 0.06 moles of sulfuric acid at the end. So from that, if we have that in 200 milliliters of water, we're going to have a, if we multiply 0 0.06 by 5, means we're going to have a 0 0.3 molar solution of sulfuric acid. Another thing that will be useful to calculate is actually how long it's going to take to electrolyze down all this copper sulfate. So let's have a look. If we have 0 0.06 moles of sulfuric acid at the end, therefore we're going to need to electrolyze through 0 0.12 moles of H plus ions. Each H plus ion is going to correspond with one electron flowing through the circuit. So we're going to need 0 0.12 moles of electrons as well. Now this number isn't very useful in moles, so we're going to need to convert that to coulombs. First we'll work out 0 0.12 uh, moles of electrons, so that's times 10 to the 23 times 6.02, which gives us 7.224 times 10 to 22 electrons. Now in coulombs we're going to have to divide by uh, 10 to the 18 times 6.24 which is 11,576 coulombs of electrons. Alright, so from this, seeing as we know that at 1 amp, 1 coulomb of electrons flows through a circuit every second, we can see that it's going to take 11,576 seconds to electrolyze through all the copper sulfate. Let's see how many hours that is. So divided by 60 will give us the minutes, and then divided by 60 again will give us the hours, which is 3.22 hours of electrolyzing. 
At 2 amps of course it's going to be twice as quick so it'll only take 1.6 hours and at 3 amps it'll be 3 times as quick so it'll only take around 1 hour. So we'll see how we go. Alright, let's connect it up. I've got a 12 volt power supply off screen to the left here. We'll connect it up to 12 volts first. Uh, negative will go to your copper electrode and positive will go to your carbon or lead dioxide anode. Actually these wires might be a little bit too low gauge to handle the current. I might make some more. Alright, these wires will be able to handle the current I reckon. So now same as before, we're going to connect the negative to copper electrode at zero volts. And we're going to connect the positive to the lead dioxide or carbon. I've got 12 volts going through it right now. It's going to start off slow because uh, copper sulfate isn't actually very conductive by itself, but as soon as you start generating some sulfuric acid, that current will go up and you might want to change the voltage down to limit the current. Alright, and we're away. You can see the oxygen being split from the water, hydrogen ions are going across, replacing the copper ions, giving us copper metal crystals. You can see they look kind of black. I've got it running at 12 volts now, but when it starts to amp up from the sulfuric acid production, I'll, I'll switch to 5 volts with my power supply there. You'll know when it's done because uh, the solution will go clear. You can see it's really quite blue now and then you'll have a sulfuric acid solution ready to use after you've filtered out all the copper and carbon if you're using that as an anode. Alright here we are two hours later uh, it's nearly done I think the blue colour is nearly all gone uh, blue table it's kind of hard to tell I should have done a piece of paper We can see blue colour is nearly all gone. Actually, there's a little bit of copper sulphate left in the bottom there. But we've amassed quite a bit of copper on the cathode, and we're still generating oxygen on the anode. Actually, let's turn that off so you can see the cathode a bit better. Yep, there you go. Just some spongy copper that we've collected on the cathode there. All the copper ions have turned into copper metal. And you can see that we're actually generating hydrogen gas now on the cathode as well because we've we've nearly run out of copper ions to convert into copper metal so it's it's favoring hydrogen now I might leave this running for another hour or two just to make sure that we've got all the copper ions out and then I can safely say it's pretty pure sulfuric acid all right here we are another hour and a bit later made a bit of a mistake last time I plugged it into the 12 volt instead of the 5 volt when I came back it got so hot that it you can kind of see it's deformed the plastic a bit because I'm just lucky that it didn't spill hot sulfuric acid everywhere anyway it's all done all the all the blue colors gone no copper sulfate left in the bottom and we've got quite a bit of copper on the electrode it all falls off it's all like sponge I'll go filter all the copper out and we'll do a test to see if it's sulfuric acid. There we are, 200 millilitres of 0.3 molar sulfuric acid. I'm storing it now in an HDPE container. It was a milk bottle before, but you need to use glass or HDPE because, well, it's sulfuric acid and it's quite corrosive. I could just decant it off in the end. Actually, I didn't even need to filter off the copper. You can see the copper in there now pure copper metal that we've extracted from copper sulfate. Alright, so to do an acid test we'll use some sodium carbonate, so I've got some in this glass jar here, and just pour a bit of the acid onto it. And if it's acid, then we should see it bubble quite a bit. There 
There we are. Sulfuric acid. Well that worked quite well. Cheap and easy sulfuric acid from copper sulfate.